What is going on, Discord Syndicate? Happy Friday, happy weekend. I am Josh. I am, will be filling in for RG3 tonight. We're going to have a couple more guests pop on as the show starts to progress. Uh, we got a, a show going on on DJ and Roundtable right now that is wrapping up uh, our book club episode. We're going to have a couple more folks hop on over there. We're going to have Zenith hop on and then whoever else wants to hop on the stream. So uh, glad to see everyone tonight. If you are on the West Coast, it is 7 o'clock p.m. You guys uh, pour yourself a little drink after dinner, sit back, hang out, enjoy the show, hop on if you want to. If you guys are on the East Coast, though, it's getting close to bedtime if you're a, uh, an early riser. So, uh, But either way, we got, the, uh, we got the link up in the description. You guys feel free to hop on. We'll get the conversation going, whatever you guys want to talk about. You guys know the routine. Hope everyone had a great week. I know I certainly did. Uh, crypto market's been pretty... I don't know what's the best way to put it. I guess, I guess it's been, you know, pretty lackadaisical recently. It seems like Bitcoin's hanging around that $68,000, $69,000 level. Every now and then it'll get up to 70, 71. It doesn't look like there's very much momentum going on right now. But, uh, but yeah, that's what the crypto market's looking like. Uh, got a little bit of news on the Richard Hart court case situation. I don't know if anybody's been checking out Twitter. Uh, there's been some posts going around, going on around the latest update when it comes to the court case. So, uh, but, uh, but yeah, if anybody wants to hop on, we got the stream open. You guys feel free to hop on. It'll, uh, make this conversation go a lot better than of course, a one-sided conversation. But so we got people filling in. Well, uh, I'm going to say what's up to the chat. We got Joe in the chat. What's going on, man? Good to see you. We got Nate the Great in the house. Crypto Compassion, good to see you, man. Good to see you. Cassie Kelly, always great seeing you as well. Let's see, AJ Rip, Compassion Rocks. All right, shout out Compassion. There you go. Got a little fan base in the house, I see. Good deal, good deal. We got here. All right, we got a midday Saturday. So Dorsey's already started his weekend. That's what it sounds like. So. Good to hear. You must be over in Australia or uh, somewhere completely across the world from the United States. That's just what I'm guessing based on that. We'll see. What is up? What is up? I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. We'll see. I can try. Apprehensively try. Okay. There we go. Got it. Uh, got it cracked down. Dorsey, I see you working. Hopefully you're grinding, getting some dry powder, taking advantage of the, uh, the dippity dips that we got going on right now. Shout out to the chat. We got 71 folks in the uh, in the live chat right now. You guys uh, keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. And as I mentioned that, we have uh, our co-host behind the scenes. I'm going to pop him on here in a second. What's up, Tam Tam? Good to see you. Good to see you in the house. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get Zenith in here. Let's, uh, let's, let's get a little bit of conversation going on stream as opposed to, to me just sitting here rambling on about the chat talking to myself here what's going on man how was book club book club was great we just wrapped over there i apologize for running a little bit over time i know i needed to be here for this but we just had to shout out the uh the richard hart sec case going down in new york october 24th there we go and uh it's actually being added to the pulse chain tour list of events so if you go to the website it is on there and you can actually rsvp for it already but yes josh book club was good we talked about thinking in bets Cool. This one right here, it was written by Annie Duke. She's actually a former professional poker player. Okay. And this book awesome. was a, a recommendation to us from Walrus. So massive uh, thank you to him and shout out to him as well. He's had some big life events going on. So we were very proud of him and wish him good congratulations. And I don't want to dox him too much. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, <laughs> for, for those that miss book club, uh, what's the premise of the book, especially coming from a, a former professional poker player? The idea was... All decisions you make can be thought about as bets, or you are betting on your level of confidence. Things are not necessarily black and white. Yes, the results that you get after any event has happened are definitive and cannot be changed. However, before that event or that decision was made, there was a bunch of different probabilities or possibilities and a likelihood of each one of those actually happening. So this book is talking about the idea of being able to create a mindset or strategy or process so that you capitalize the most that you can 
on all the different outcomes, or you try to maximize upside and reduce downside effectively. Yeah, and I mean, when you think of the game of poker or something like that, you can draw a lot of similarities to life, you know, especially in the game of poker. You know, you're oh, delta sure. hand. Yeah, you you know, you're delta hand and you have that information. And then all of a sudden all the bets are placed and, you know, then the flop comes. And now you have a completely different set of information. You know, you might have been holding pocket rockets in your hand, but all of a sudden, you know, somebody flips a straight on the board or something like that. It's just like, you know, all this stuff is crazy. Um, you know, we each get independent information along the way. And especially as things constantly change. So there's definitely a lot of similarities that can be drawn. Definitely. So. One of the best ideas from the book was making the analogy that life is not chess. Life is more like poker. The idea yeah. is that chess is theoretically a solved game or there's a finite amount of moves and a like mathematically correct answer. However, poker is more like life because there's tons of unknown information that you are not going to get, but you still have to make the best decisions you possibly can with what you got. Yeah, for sure. Hey, uh, we got two other people in the background. I'm going to bring them on. Sound good? All right, we got it. Mr. Will Stevenson in the house, and Speaking we got Mr. Me. Crypto Coffee in the house also. What's going on, guys? Well, well, well. Good, What's up, nerds? Where the hell is uh, RG3? Who, who gave you guys the wheel today? I, I don't know. <laughs> something crazy. At, yeah, he's hanging out in Utah right now for the uh, their Pulse Chain tour. So we just gave you the hell to the, the ship? You're just, like, winging it now? Something Bro, like we that. Got the, something we got like the that. fucking helm right here, boy. Oh, we are driving this <laughs> ship. Well, look, I guess, I mean, I mean, if I would trust anybody, it'd be you, you motherfuckers. Hey, look at guys, me. Look like me. I am the captain like, now. I, 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 I like it. I like it. Yeah. Life is, uh, <laughs> life is, li I think life is more like backgammon, actually. Life is more like okay. Mahjong. <laughs> life, life is more like, uh, you know, three, uh, it's kind of like, bla it's kind of like blackjack mixed with roulette. Oh, I'm definitely. I'm telling you right now, I'm definitely a, belt, a blackjack player. I absolutely love blackjack. Blackjack's my game in a casino. But can, can we talk about how Richard Hart's always playing uh, 5D chess, but every time like he gains another dimension, like next he's playing 6D chess, now it's 7D. Yeah, it's like, absolutely. Like, when does it end? I, like, what if he's what a... if really just playing checkers the whole time? Look, that's what I think it is. Cool. That's my theory. That's my peanut brain theory. By the way, coffee on this. I just want to say the way that you have your camera positioned, you look like a pilot with the little epaulets that like they would have their rank on. I know it's your chair behind you, but it looks like you're you're wearing like the white pilot T-shirt and you got the little rank insignia things on your shoulders. Yeah, yeah dude, not, not really, man. I'm very I'm very not qualified to be driving this plane. <laughs> just Love trying it. to figure it out while it's still in the air, you know. So, say, so, so uh, go for it, the, the chess thing, I was, I was just going to ask about the chess thing. Oh, oh, so I mean, I, I was just like tuning into these guys, uh, good old Zenith and Josh. As far Dude. as Richard Hart playing 5d chess though, I got to say like every day it feels more and more like there's extra layers on top of this. Cause I saw you put out the video where you covered the entire, uh, motion to dismiss, by the way, that was a great great video for a lot of folks that want a good explainer it's about half an hour and covers pretty much the entire thing thanks yeah you know the whole the whole thing about that is some people just want to hear the words and they don't want to read the words like i basically just fucking like said all the words and like explain what they mean kind of but i mean people are so lazy out here dude so anyway yeah it, it's just good for everyone to be on the same page i'm just like don't be afraid to read or, or like i'll read a 69 page document so that you guys don't have to but like Everybody, I think everybody that actually cares about the case has actually read the document. Like, I'm sure you guys actually read it. And like, oh, if, fuck you no. it, if you read it, you, you can just be that much more confident in this whole thing. Like what we're doing here. Like, are you guys going to come to um, New York in October? You think we want to, however, there's actually a great irony to this whole thing, which is that we were already previously planning to go to Miami for the Cardano conference, literally <laughs> the 23rd through 25th. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. Dude. Why, why are you going to the Cardano conference, dude? It's just going to be a bunch of uh, dudes' boyfriends and uh, their girlfriends. Yeah, oh, it was uh, – we uh, – I mean, so one of our guys, Brendan, um, he he likes to uh, dabble in the Cardano ecosystem. And, shout, you know, I, I got to give a shout-out to the Cardano Miami chapter at least. They, uh, they invited us down last year, so we had a small contingency go down. It was myself, it was Will, it was Brendan, and uh, one of our OG members – 
um, and they allowed us to give a presentation. And, and Brendan gave just a knockout presentation about inflation and all different sorts of stuff. So, uh, you know, they gave us an opportunity to sort of get together and give a little bit of information and, and to expose our channel to more ecosystems and stuff like that. So just shout out to them. We, we made uh, some really good connections while we were there. And they were like, hey, next year, if we're doing this, please come back and this, that and the other. So, you know, it was a good opportunity to get down there, especially get down to Miami in like october or november or something like that but um that's beautiful dude that's beautiful yeah. like all these all these connections that i see being made and like you, mm -hmm. like you're not even like bragging about them you're just doing it like you're just doing what you like needs to be done and like people people don't realize that's gonna have ripple effects because i mean the only thing that sucks worse than being a pulse chain holder right now is probably being a cardano holder and like if we make the, like, connections <laughs> with those people like i mean dude, right I, and I, I think charles hoskinson is a really smart motherfucker dude i really do he's a good guy um but you know, we've got like, no, you know, just just saying the facts here. The metrics on uh, Cardano are, hey, crypto compassion, what's up? The, the what's metrics up, on Pulse Chain, objectively on chain metrics, are beating Cardano, and we're not even a year old. So uh, I mean, I know it's not like a, I mean, I know we're all on Team Crypto here, but uh, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of Cardano people that might um, find a better home in Pulse Chain. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And you know, they gave us a shot before we even had like. 400 500 subs you know what i'm saying so you know uh, we just crossed easy. yeah we just crossed the 1000 mark so shout out to that that's a big accomplishment so we're you guys deserve so that. much more than a thousand dude like <laughs> you guys you guys have a well put together fucking thing like I, i'm sure i'm sure as the market starts to heat up and stuff like that our viewership is going to grow and as long as we keep having stand up you know influencers that have paid the path before us you rg you know walrus everybody maddie every single person that's come on our show uh, shout out to them for for allowing us to get to the you know the point of where we are. But this isn't the DJ Roundtable show right now. This is the F and Hangout. So uh, yeah, but it I'm might gonna... as well be DJ Roundtable, bro. You guys, you guys are killing <laughs> it out there. Like, are you kidding me? Like, it's just a dream team, you know. It's just like the people people with the right headspace, with the optimism when everybody else is talking shit, just having fun. I mean, it sucks right now, dude. This is ultimate. Like, this is the dip. This is the mother of all dips. You know, when I when I when I said like the bull is sometimes harder than the the bear. This is what I mean, dude. Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. What if Bitcoin retraces to 52K and then Pulse chain PLS goes to uh, six or five? Yeah. Like, you guys are diamond handing it, but, you know, you need to keep banging the drum like we all do. Crypto yeah. compassion, you know, as far as I know, you've never you've never wavered from your original position either. Right. Yeah, right. Right. Yep. You know, of course, no. we, we all branch out into different ecosystems. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, yep. yeah. What's going on, Compassion? Good to see you tonight, man. Yeah, yeah. So RG said, uh, it, you know, I was going to go down to Utah. I was talking to the hexiest man in the world. He's down in Utah with, you know, Hex Ray Vision. I was going to go, but things came up. It sounds like they're going to have a great time down in Utah um, doing their thing. Um, I always like doing those in life, you know, in real person type stuff. You know, we kicked up some dust doing some karaoke. I know down in Vegas coffee <laughs> got a little good times, lively man, there good times, good times yeah, you know no, we're, we're not uh, i'm not going to be chilling with the mormons but it sounds utah seems like a beautiful state it really does yeah um, yeah where, where are you from if you don't mind me asking compassion oregon see that's what i thought so yeah hell yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i'm yeah, out here in oregon how West many wives Coast. do you have how many wives not that many yeah you know Just no so so we got our own little cook up here in the Northwest. You know, we got RH Max and, you know, the boys up in, you know, Big G and all them boys up in Seattle. So we do our thing. We like to meet up and do our stuff and have fun. So wait, RH Max stuff. is from Utah? No, RH Max is up in the Seattle area. That's what I thought. Yeah. But the Northwest. Yeah, no no kidding. Utah. Yes. Oh, fuck. I grew up in, I grew up in Port Angeles just outside of Seattle. I had no idea. Yeah, Port That's Angeles crazy. is a beautiful city. You got a great yeah. backdrop to the mountains there and everything. So, um, yeah, it's all good. At some point, though, I think I'm going to have to move down to your neck of the woods or palm trees there, buddy. And, uh, uh, you know, more than merrier. Hey, more than merrier. You know, people there's, do that there's thing. Like 6,000 of us. Like, people do an Act 60. I thought there'd be more, but it turns out what a lot of people do is they move in the euphoria and then they get wrecked and then they have to move back. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I got my buddy over here. You guys want to meet Matt? This guy's like an ex, uh, what do you, what do you want to call him? Holly, <laughs> Cryptillionaire, but uh, Hollywood uh, OG. Holy weirdo. Holy weirdo. What's up, what's up? Oh, what's up, dude? Um, 
What's up? We got a little tell, bit tell of. Tell me who you are. Tell me who you are. In the business. So listen, look, I, I was like an OG hex investor, like back in the day. Uh, I've been in this space since like 2016. Um, I was in the Dow, like uh, uh, like uh, 2016. Um, yeah, after that, I was a market maker, and I started Ethereum. Right? Ethereum, Ethereum. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the second ICO on Ethereum uh, was 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 the Dow, yeah. uh, and then you know got hacked, uh, and then that's when they forked. ETH, the ETH Classic, but anyways, to make a long story short, yeah, like, uh, Richard Hart is my motherfucking homie, I love that man, uh, and, um, yeah, I've been in this space a long time, and, um, that's the whole kit and caboodle, I'm a gringo rican, you know, I'm here, <laughs> gringo, gringo rican it up in, uh, Puerto Rico, and, uh, that's the whole kit and caboodle, is my man Chris, should we, should we interview the dog next, yeah, this is, this is the Puerto dude, Rican look at this, bro. This, is, he's, he's, this is what the dog, he's a little tiger, bro, Dude, this is a real Puerto this, Rican dog. This fucker could fuck, fuck shit up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, man, what, what, what the moral of the story is, is that everyone knows Richard, and a lot of people actually have uh, deep respect I for him. I, uh, I mean, this is a Ethereum OG, oh, like, yeah. early Hex yeah. investor. But, you know, one of the quiet ones. Like, there's a lot of, like, closet ones that just never, like, were like, oh, I'm a Hexican. But they were just like, yeah, like, quiet. Well, they'll, they'll attack us. You know the lawsuits like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> if you <laughs> Yeah, if you're already involved in some other shit, like you, you don't want to also die on the hex hill. But this is the hill that I'm going to die on. So I don't know about you guys. It's a good hill. It seems like a darn good one to fight on. That's for that's for sure. And I think this community is putting up a hell of a fight. I was going to ask you. Uh, you were part of submitting the amicus briefs, right? Yeah. So that's actually uh, fully approved. It's getting submitted by ICANN. ICANN is a legal firm that specifically is, is run by the people that used to work at the SEC. Ironically, to combat SEC overreach, because that's all they seem to do these days. Uh, so we're using those 44,000 44, signatures. Congrats to all you guys. Shout out to literally everybody watching, all you guys. I'm sure you signed it. I don't care if you use your real name or not. It doesn't even matter if you if you made your address to the McDonald's across the street. Who cares? Um, <laughs> 44,000 people voted that uh, basically to say that they were victims of the SEC and not Richard. You know, I can point to the chart and tell you exactly where the SEC protected me. It was on a negative 60% candle in today. <laughs> you know, th thanks, thanks, Gary, Gary Guzzler. So, uh, yeah, we're submitting this on, uh, and it was also recommended by uh, lawyers. Let, let me just say lawyers in support of Richard Hart. Uh, that's all I can say that um, recommended that we do it this way. So instead of submitting on behalf of Robert Barnes from the, the original lawyer we were going to submit on, because he, he's a great lawyer too, but, um, you know, he's defended like Jamie Foxx and Kyle Rittenhouse. We thought we had a good lawyer, but these guys are even better because they um, they have connections to the SEC and they actually know people that work there. They used to work there, you know. So uh, the Paul Street Foundation DAO DAO uh, is submitting on behalf of ICANN, uh, and that's submitting on behalf of all forty four thousand of you guys. Over half of which, by the way, are not even from the USA. So that further proves the jurisdictional issue that the the SEC is barking up the wrong tree. They think they're the the police of the entire world. Dude, there's more investors outside of the USA than not. Like, that's actually a fact. Definitely. And then for the folks at home, the, the amicus brief is effectively just trying to provide extra context or information to a judge who doesn't necessarily know all the ins and outs of whatever case they're ruling on because they're a judge. They're not a crypto expert. So this is a way that we can provide context and kind of just as a third party educate and be like, hey, here's kind of our take on it and to provide a little more surrounding information about what's going on here and i gotta say though after reading the uh the brief there's there's a good bit of humor in it specifically when they tell them the sec is making claims of richard hart being a time traveler because they claim that he used money to buy things five months before he ever had the money or the money was transferred <laughs> it's so good man it's like it's comically bad like the 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 uh the misinformation in the allegations and in the complaint it's uh it's almost like karma, right? It's like, this is what you get for, for messing with Richard Hart. And what you're going to get is a courtroom full of, uh, I, I want to see a thousand people in that courtroom. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, do you think, I, I don't think we should wear Hex uh, apparel. I think we should dress like civilians, but what do you guys think? You mean suit it up and just come in like professional? Well, just like a business, like, cause like, my thought is if we all like have pick, uh, you know, hack shirts on and all this stuff, it might look obvious that we're obviously investors as well, um, right. which might make us look biased. So what if we all just looked like concerned citizens because uh, this is a blockchain issue at heart, actually?
Like there really is. It's it's more than just hacks. It's actually all of blockchain. But at the same yeah. time, I don't want to pussy out and be like, no. Like, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I hear, I hear what you're saying. You go for it, compassion. No, yeah, I hear what you're saying though. Um there's times to, you know, do the hex flex afterwards, you know, at our afterwards parties. And to answer your earlier question, I'll I'll be in New York with everyone too. Um, but yeah, you're right. Um, it's an important event. Uh, we need to show out, you know, and, uh, there needs to be a level of professionalism. It can't just be, you know, crazed, you know, circus clowns, you know, jumping up and down in the courtroom. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say like, uh, let's not shoot ourselves in the foot in some weird way. Yeah. But, but it comes you know, to the I mean, presentation. I mean, Richard's lawyers literally recommended that we we come because even to have like ten dudes show up in a courtroom is rare. No, no, almost nobody gives a shit about these things. So, this is a First Amendment violation. Like, this could go all the way to the Supreme Court. It's worth anybody coming, even if it's your wife, girlfriend, aunt, uncle, sister. You know, bring whoever you want because this is going to affect inevitably 10 years down the line it's going to affect their ability to transact as well i i think apparel is certainly important but i think the conduct and the behavior is definitely going to be with yes. this home you know if everyone's in there if they're respectable and you know they're professional and all that stuff that's going to speak volumes you know and it, so, you, so you could blend that right in with dressing in like a, a you know business casual manner or even dressing professional you know, when I go out, whenever I do anything, I got, I at least got a sports coat on. I mean, you can ask Will when we were down in Miami. You know, anytime oh, yeah. I go out, I at least got a sports coat on and a, and a collar on or something. But that's just me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not everyone. So, uh, but definitely uh, the demeanor of everybody there, I think, is that if everybody, you know, it, it, especially if there are a lot more people that end up showing up, you know, everybody's going to be excited. But as long as that can mm-hmm. be tamed and remain professional, you know, I think that's going to speak volumes. The last thing that we want is people that are obnoxious in a courtroom or, you know, just really giving it a bad look and a bad view. So, uh, but yeah, that's ultimately what I think. I love that. dude. That's uh, yeah. What basically what Josh said, um, yeah. you know, if, if uh, CNN is there and they're doing interviews, you know, I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to be given <laughs> introducing myself as crypto coffee on YouTube. Right. Like I'm just going to be like, Hey, I'm just a concerned citizen. I'm sure you're not mm-hmm. going to call yourself chocolate chocolate taint. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I will not. Yeah. I, I, that's, I need that's to see that Chiron on CNN. I need to see the interview with chocolate taints. Yeah. You know, it does present a great marketing opportunity. Like you said, where if we do get outside press coverage and we even invite them in and I'd imagine if we fast forward right now, we're kind of crying about price, but in October, I'd imagine that things are going to be, you know, doing its thing. If we could have some outside press just showing that there's solidarity and support at this particular courtroom meeting, it's going to kind of speak volumes to the rest of the crypto community of like, wow, look, they're standing up for freedom you yeah, know what cool. I mean? on, our, on our behalf. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. What's up, IG Black? What up? Good to see IB. How you doing, man? How's your Friday going? Guys. Pretty chill, pretty chill Friday, just hanging out and the edibles kick in and chillax Friday night. What are you thinking? Are you uh are you gonna go to New York in October? I will. I will. I was talking about that with Hex. So um Yeah, we'll see what we do. Uh we don't know if we're gonna fit. Uh we'll just if not, we'll just go out and we'll just get some I don't know, some some banners or something at least make some noise i noticed that in the last like couple of days uh, some of the lawyers are getting into it too uh hopefully some of the influencers follow you know follow follow too it should be good but uh you know rh he has a lot of uh a lot of haters in that side so i wish they can just kind of just look the other way for a little bit from the spectator okay. standpoint what you said there about like actually packing the courtroom that's the goal it might suck that we're not. Some of us are not going to get into the courthouse, but at the same time, if you can fill the room, that says something. Yeah, and that was that was along the lines of what I was just going to say is, unless it's a high profile case, I can't imagine there's going to normally for a normal court case. I can't imagine that there's that many people out of there unless it's like 
you know, a, a high, it's got a lot of media coverage or it's a high profile case or something like that. So right. if all of a sudden one day, you know, in October, the courtroom is just flooded and there's no, even no standing room and there's a mob, you know, I'm not going to say a mob, but there's a group of folks that are outside that might draw a little bit of attention and, you know, get, seeing where the market might be in October, you know, it's, it's not hard to read the tea leaves if you look at how the momentum is going and and how everything has been going over the last couple months and how, you know, I, that's a side note. Either way, where we could be in October, we, prices could be a lot more elevated, which could mean a whole lot more exposure. So that could be very interesting to see. Imagine Definitely. The- we got a we got a good comment here from Rick Schmitz. He says, "I think we should be representing freedom of speech instead of a ticker, aka hex." But that's just his opinion. I think this is a good point, which is that it's it's something that Coffee talked about earlier. This is larger than us, and if you look into some of the other stuff going on right, right now with the SEC suing uh, Uniswap, there people are starting to attach to this bandwagon as well. This is only getting bigger. How crazy is that? You know, and I'm not even like, like I'm not even that like. I guess I've let it go. When Uniswap delisted hacks, I was angry at him. And I'm just like, you know what? Whatever. We're not, we don't even need you guys. Like, we don't, we got PulseX now. Um, but it's just, it's just ironic all the people that are standing up for Uniswap that literally begged the SEC to go after Richard. It's like that, that kind of mentality is what actually makes me a little irritated. Like, I don't get irritated often, but like that, that kind of stuff is like, we're all on this, we're all on team crypto, dude. That's true. We got yep. the, the plumber speaks. He's saying, make sure you associate crypto as free speech. Being able to purchase what you desire is the highest form of speaking freely. This is a good point. If uh, you paid attention to some of the stuff going on in the last election cycle, or it might have been two before that, it was a Supreme Court determination around super PACs. It's kind of this idea that uh, spending money is free speech and you can spend money however you, you choose, in which case sometimes limiting the amount of money you can spend on things is limiting free speech. Speech. So this could be a similar vein, and it seems like a very profitable argument, in my opinion, along with what coffee you mentioned earlier, jurisdictional. This is this might not be the SC's jurisdiction, and that's good reason to just yeah. whack him. Look, I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer, but like his, his lawyers seem to be making awesome points. I mean, it's not only the jurisdiction thing; it's then it's like the foreign transaction versus domestic thing. The free speech thing was last. It's like if all these other four things fail, you're also infringing on free speech. But you know, we just saw the. Uh, government today kind of infringing on the fourth amendment which was uh pretty fucked up you know saying that like some people don't need a warrant to search a house i mean that's not that's oh dude i don't like where i don't like where it's going it's uh yeah. it started yeah. in like november of 21 whenever they uh they made everyone a broker and all the crypto's property so they right. passed like, that you, even Uniswap, right bill. Yeah, no, everything. Because it's just that that bill, it was very odd how it was just approved like that. And nobody just said anything. It was just at and least. They squeezed it in. They squeezed it in right. like a hundred page document. It's like, yeah. bro, like, because, like, yeah, I mean, it's luckily we got AI right. now. So, yeah, y'all should be plugging these things into AI so we don't have to read, you know, a hundred fucking pages. But, uh, you know, this is this is really yeah, like, none of them, right? this is the one this is the one time where we can actually all collectively have an impact on the future. I mean, we, we all have the same goals. I like we really do all have the same goals. So whether or not we're picking little fights here and there, fuck Uniswap, sure, fuck Bankless, yeah, <laughs> whatever. But uh, I mean, we should we should. I mean, there, there's a greater enemy here. You know what I mean? Hey, shout out to uh, D based here with the fifty five dollar fifty five cent super chat swag. Wow. Shout out D based man. Will, can we show the people the tattoo? Who yep, the there the it is. Cinco tattoo. I hope that helps. I don't know if you can see all. it in the light. Oh, there, oh, there, you there you go. Beauty. Hopefully, nobody checked the price chart today. Just if you haven't yet, don't look at it. <laughs> hey, it's ain't worth it. It ain't selling time. Don't check the price. I mean, if you, you the only buy. time you need to look you at the price buy. chart if you're buying or selling. Good time well, to buy. Not financial yeah. advice, but I'm just saying. Yeah. This might, yeah, this might be the time to aggressively buy. But look, uh, apparently Israel it. Palestine is having some issues. Apparently, the Federal Reserve backtracked on what they said they were going to do, so they're no longer going to do the rate cuts this year. Uh, 2024, you know. It, it, this time is actually different. We, we've never seen crypto in a 
global uh, quantitative tightening situation. Right. right. Exactly. Yep. We've never seen it with 7% interest rates and, and that sort of situation. It's always been a QE situation since Bitcoin's existence. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see what happens here. But we've also never seen it with ETF Bitcoin. It's true. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's like two, it's, it's like two, two, yeah, you know, if axis is crosses and yeah, exactly. And that, and there's rumors that it's coming. And if, if we get that ETH, the umbrellas just, just trickle off funds into pool string, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's crazy. Do you guys think it'll get approved right away in May or it gets a little, uh, just a couple months delay? If I had to bet, it would be delays. You know how the SEC is. They, yeah. they yeah. yeah. But so. anything can happen, bro. I mean, BlackRock filed. Yep. BlackRock has a pretty yep. high success rate, but um, rather than get hopeful about May, I'd say maybe Q4, maybe, maybe, maybe. Great. So maybe just January is, of twenty-five. Some stats for the for the folks <laughs> at home. We have a first batch of ETH ETFs that the final approval date is May twenty-third and twenty-fourth. That's the Van Eck and the Arc twenty-one shares, and then the. BlackRock ETF has an approval date set for August, August 7th. So, oh, you that's a special date say, for me. You know, yeah. If you, if you look at the record, <laughs> BlackRock has only had like two things not approved. So, You're right. it seems like a betting favorite to me, but what, at the what same were time, they? It's do, you know what, do you know what the two things were? I can't remember. The only reason I know this is because Charlie and Miguel pound this drum all the time. Oh, yeah. Let me see oh, if I yeah. can yeah. find it beat that drum <laughs> uh, DCC actually had a pretty good point in one of his streams the other day he was uh looking at he was basically saying look you can tell when the meme coin season's over just look at um look at dog with hat because that's the most successful meme coin of the season he's like when that goes on a downtrend maybe meme coin season's over but to this day it's still not it still hasn't really established a downtrend I'm like you know what miguel kind of not a bad idea <laughs> yeah Tell you what, now, of course, Josh. there's a shit ton of other meme coins, but you guys memeing on the Pulse chain lately? Yeah. <laughs> Un poquito. Un Very poquito. much so. I, Not I, me. Not me. Z, you want me to share this? Please do. I got the answer right. to our question, which is uh, the SEC has only once rejected an ETF application from BlackRock. <laughs> this is coming from Crypto Slate. <laughs> And here it was saying that the proposed ETF was characterized by its non-transparent nature, which would have hidden its holdings from investors akin to a blind trust. Moreover, the Shepard Smith Edwards and Katana noted that this ETF did not provide assurance that its trading would be aligned with the net asset value. So there you go. So, so whenever they start doing derivatives from derivatives. So That's BlackRock true. is a pretty good record, is what you're saying. Very good. Very, yeah, very good. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Uh, but no, coffee, I, I'm not doing any meme on Pulse Chain. Like, I've already, you know, I'm, I'm sticking with the main bags, and I, I don't play around. I know we got a couple guys in the DGen Roundtable that like to play around. Yeah, you, guys, you guys are, you guys are literally DGen Roundtable. I, I know. Ask me. Guys the out. name is deceptive. The name is definitely <laughs> deceptive because – uh, there are a couple of us that are even more conservative than, you know, a, a lot of other people. So, all right, all uh, right. but real, real quick, I, I, cause this is just me. I, I actually don't know this for sure. And I want to get a, a litmus test from all you guys. It's like, um, cause I've heard facts for the case. I've heard facts against the case. P die. Mm -hmm. Conspiracy pegging bullshit or really good meme or actually going to happen like or some, some what do you think i think that, I, I think that if from the initial launch of pool chain if it came out that that thing was going to peg to a dollar and that narrative was something that stuck that people would jeet out of their pool chain bags and 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 dump. So it's like cooking a frog. I think that it's a situation where RH is not willing to spill the tea on his 40 chess on that play. That it needs to happen over a progressional chance because he still wants to protect and protect the individuals that own Pulse X and Pulse Chain and stuff like that. I mean, if people just dump their bags like today's guy. 
in that respect and just started right. aping into, you know, to P die because it's like, Hey, I'm going to just go grab this thousand X that's going to, you know, capture within like a two month span. It, that's my conspiracy that it's like cooking a frog. It's like, I can't, I can't release it all, but I do feel like it's a hub within the ecosystem that if we could get a, another DeFi uh, stable coin within Pulse Chain and that's it. And he controls that narrative at, at a certain point. It's pretty powerful. Like, I, yeah, I know what you mean. I want it to happen, but I'm also aware of how desperate I am for it to happen, which makes me I know. doubt my own self. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Listen, if Let's there's go one thing you, that I've, just... if there's one thing that I've learned and, and I'm going to hop in here real quick. If there's one thing I've learned about markets throughout this crypto journey is Everything moves based on psychology. So if there's even a hint by anybody in authority within Pulse Chain that PDI will have some sort of uh, permanence or it will become the de facto, uh, you know, stable. stable coin or something like that, then you better believe that the psychology is going to flow in that direction. The problem is, is that we're in a situation where it's, you know, that that narrative isn't out there. Nothing like that has been said. So the psychology isn't going that way. I I base how, you know, when I foresee, when I look out, when I try to project something, I do based off of market psychology. And, you know, if if there's enough flow that can do that, then absolutely PDI could peg to the dollar and, you know, we could have of a lot of very rich people in here. Um, but I, I don't know if market sentiment will ever trend that way unless there was like a direct tweet or there was a direct plan or something that became known. But uh, that's just me. I, 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 uh, well, that, I'd be, what do you think? Today, that tweet today got people riled up, but I, yeah. I don't think, I think that tweet today was like more of just like, yo, you have free coins here kind of tweet. Like, I, I wasn't convinced that it was like, I'm totally behind this. But again, that's the confusing part. Like I could see both sides. I'm just like I. I also know the that problem is like we don't have the we don't have the same infrastructure that we have in um, in Ethereum, and then the, there's the issue with the supply being three billions to twenty two billion in PDI. Um, then there's the incentives. Uh, there's that account that has three hundred plus, you know, million PDI. So. I know we used to talk a lot about that strategy because we were looking for uh, the second best PRC after Hex, which now ended up being, at least for the fork or the strategies, PDI ended up being the best strategy because it's made the yeah. most excess and then you were able to uh, protect your purchasing power on the Ethereum side. So you could have dumped Hex at 30, 40, 52 cents and then just protect it all the way down and then just copy it, turn it into Pulse, and then now just... You know, DCA into PDI as it was pumping, but um, as as far as a dollar, I don't know yet because I don't know if that supply is going to keep burning or if it's going to stay like that high, more than twenty plus billion. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, here's the thing too: is like I'm also confused about the Oracle module that's supposed to be keeping tabs on all this. the The maker voters need would need to vote the or as far as I know, this could be peanut brain shit, but like. The, the people that own the most maker are the maker founder, Rune Christensen and Sam, and a bunch of VCs that they sold to. And there was a whole big battle earlier on about the VCs having a different point of view than the founders and the founders won and all that. But now you've got Richard Hart that seems to have, have scooped, oh, I'm sorry, the sacrifice address that seems to have scooped up uh, 46,000 maker, which is about, about 5% of the total supply. And allegedly, he actually made a vote to pause all future... Um, pause all future uh, votes for a while but he, he was I think he was only able to do that because uh, the, the maker founders and the VCs didn't really know or care to, to switch over and vote on the Paul chain network now can he actually override critical infrastructure like the Oracle module to actually get it working again to collateralize that like that's the that's like the final 10 percent missing piece where i'm just like i think it's just not gonna happen and i'm it's a conspiracy but like if you follow nine iron capital on uh twitter he makes some good on-chain analysis but at the same time i'm like he, people also assume things in between not him i'm just saying other people like embellish the story they're like oh well you know the, the maker founder one time tweeted at richard 
And it's like, that doesn't prove anything, bro. Cause right. they tweeted at each other one time. Like that doesn't mean that they're fr- like best buddies and that they're in cahoots together. Like you can't just, you know, but, but it's a good story. And what I have seen is it's brought a lot, actually it's brought a lot more people in uh, a lot, a lot of outsiders. It's actually brought in because they see the big green candle. You know, I just, okay, here's my, here's my official position right now. I think it can get to a dollar, but it's not going to stay that a dollar. But I would, love, I, I would love to be proven wrong. I think, well, actually, I know, rather, I definitively know that I know absolutely nothing about all of this stuff. And therefore, er, no, not in therefore. And I also know that most of the decisions that I've made in the past have turned out to be wrong, except for a couple. And my initial decision was to forego p die and to just completely ignore it and be like, oh, that's stupid. And that turned out to be wrong. And so what I'm what I'm gambling on is my ability to be wrong is so spot on that it'll probably be wrong more in the future. And so I'm just going to buy some and then gamble <laughs> that I'm wrong. And if I'm not, then cool. And if I am, well then, oh no, money down the drain. whoop did you I'll just go print some more money by working somewhere and doing some job and bringing value to the world. But that's my uh, that's my only that's my my strategy here because I don't understand any of this shit that you guys are talking about. That's all like that's all mid curve and mid curve and and wrinkly people brain stuff. Like I'm over here, <laughs> and I'm like I'm trying to figure out how to like onboard into Pulse Chain and like how to use different off ramps. And I'm like, damn, what is this Rabby Wallet thing? I've never tried that before, you know. So it's like. <laughs> So I think that I think that just I, the the peanut brain approach is the the best approach. I love the way you think, and like it reminds me of something that I've been going through, which is like there's only 24 hours in a day to give a shit about stuff. Like, yep. Like you have limited options of what you can care about in one single day, and it's like um, me going down the P die rabbit hole took me like three days of my life, dude, and I like ignored other stuff. And I was just like, dude, I like, I need to like, I need to go eat. I need to take a shower. Like, what? The, yeah. yeah. Like, what the hell? So, yeah. So, um, like, the, you should have watched the, our videos that we put last year because we were talking all about this whenever Hexo talked to Richard in like um, December of uh, 2021 on the birthday. So there's, like there's also they were trying to protect like purchasing power on the other side because Hex was going from like 50 cents to like. This going nowhere, getting all kinds of dumpage. Yeah, well, that was uh, that was like the liquidity pool shifting. I think I remember that, and I do also remember Richard saying something about um, his, he had an idea for a stable coin, and it's yeah. like I don't want to assume that that was P die because it might be something totally different. But he did say that like two or three times. Yep. Well, it was just around that time the the narrative was USDL. Everyone wanted to get the loans and all that stuff. So anything that wanted was against that narrative. Nobody wanted to listen to. So we were we were trying to talk as much as possible about die because of that because we knew out of the coins that were gonna get copied, it was the only ones that were gonna have no admin keys. And then if we were to have as much maker as possible, then we could control the voting. So but you're then, like you're said, a believer. Oh, bro! I did videos on die in two thousand and twenty-one. I have videos in in November of twenty-one telling people, "Hey, if you want to protect your purchasing power, this is what you need to do." I mean, wow. we did another one later in twenty-two, telling when when we hit like twelve cents because we thought we're gonna go even under. So when we had that second pump before the sack, um, before the launch, we told people get into die. I called them like, "Why die?" So it was just. We were looking for ways, and then everyone just kept saying, "All right, we're gonna get my hex. It's gonna pump to th- through five bucks, and then I'm gonna dump it, and then I'm gonna use all that purchasing power into Pauls." And once I was in the in the main chat hearing that narrative every single day, I was like, "All right, well, everyone's doing the same star- strategy. We're all buying hex. We're all pumping it to a couple dollars, and then we're gonna dump it." So once that happened, that's when I was like, all right, well, we need to get a better strategy, better strategy, which it was, it was die. At that point, it was like die became like the best PR, uh, best ERC because it not only protected your purchasing power, but then you copied it and then you could dump it for Paul's as the PDI uh, purchasing power was dumping. And then you reacquired it in the summer as it just 
completely dipped. So, hey, uh, yeah, we, I mean, I, I explained that on the video. Like, I mean, I have a video saying exactly to the price point it was going to hit. I said five zeros and everything. And I said, if nobody hits it, I'll be the only one to buy it. I call it identity block die. I mean, I, I have all kinds of videos saying stuff about die. Hey, I um just real quick, I want to kick it over to Zenith real quick. He's got something that he wants to share, and I think it's on topic. Uh, Z, go ahead. Yeah, so I guess I'm the receipts guy tonight. I have pulled up ba -ba -da -ba, Richard Hart's tweet. Is this the one that you were talking about earlier, Coffee? Oh, you mean the one just today? or? Oh, yeah, sorry, the one today. The, it doesn't specifically call out PDI, but it talks about Wraps Bitcoin and how there's the, the free coin on Pulse Chain. And this is the... the the Bitcoin and DAI are kind of like related. And my understanding is that that's all the uh, Tropa stuff, right? I mean, well, DAI is linked to a Tropa, but what, I don't think uh, WBTC is, is it? it. It is. And if you so if you go on the Go Pulse website, the it's there's they have a family of coins called the forked ones. It's everything that's like PWBC, BTC, yeah. PDI, PUSDC, PAVE, oh, PCROW. Yeah. Oh. all that stuff yeah. so me personally when i look at this tweet from richard hart what i see is something similar to what our, our good buddy eco builder does with sending out all the hex promo material or the idea that if you send coins to some of the largest wallet addresses or target some of these largest whales it's a way to get people in and this is one of those things where it's like who has all these coins the people that hold the unforked versions on the original chains, AKA Ethereum and Bitcoin, which means that right. chances are those are some decently sized bags. It's just one of those things to get more people over. And it's just, it's kind of like free money. It's like, why right. not take it? Why but, not get I involved? Like, I, I was like tweeting today. I was like, look, if you don't believe in Pulse Chain, come over and take the free money. But I, I would hope that some of those whales actually come over and they choose to believe in it because not like, because they're already rich, right? A lot of these guys that are big die holders, what do you need uh, $20,000 for? Right? Why don't you just actually pay attention to Pulse Chain? Um, I think the world's largest airdrop was actually a good narrative. I just, I was actually about to make a video about this of like, because I saw people getting away from it and, and saying every time you tell someone they have like free money on Pulse Chain, they just kind of like spit in your face and they're like, oh, fuck you. Like, thanks for the free coins, bitch. And it's like, but those are only the small, those are the small guys, right? Those are the guys that have like 10 bucks of free coins. Like maybe the whales would actually be more useful to our community and they're not going to dump their all their, let's say they got 10 million PDI. Why would they dump it for $10,000 if they could just join our team? Uh, maybe, I mean, but then on the other side, you got Richard early on, he, he made some P Pepe, E Pepe pairs some WBTC pairs and then he removed them. So, you know, he removed them quickly. I think that's because the plebs were taking advantage of that. But I think that like there's good and bad things about the world's largest airdrop narrative, right? That's another, that's basically even a, a bigger concept than PDI. It's like in general, the PRC 20, ERC 20 thing, it, it works great. When I onboard people in real life and I say, yo, you got free coins here, bro. And they're like, whoa, I, let me check, you know? But if you say that to someone online, some anime profile picture, they're just like, stupid scam. And it's like, okay. All right, dude. Don't don't take your ten dollars, whatever. Like, but imagine it's more than ten dollars. You know what I mean? Uh, imagine imagine RH when he said it's going to be the most liquid Dex that he needs to print candles, and that's when the world's large airdrop really hits. When people realize that it's more than ten bucks. You know yeah, what I mean? Dude, I, I'm so glad that I didn't sell my die initially because right. I have four. I have four die from the beginning. I was thinking about selling it, but I, you know, I was just like, yeah, let's just see what happens. I think I just got lucky, honestly, because I, I didn't, I did not predict the die thing. I'm just going to say, it, I did not see that coming. And the, and the die thing, the issue too was that it was tricky because if you were, if you were in a pool, you got wrecked through the fork. So you needed to be liquid and then you right. needed to get it through the fork, dump it day one, get as much pulse as possible, let it dump. And then as it was going down, 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 then DCA into it all the way till August that it did the whole all time yeah. low. I mean, the only reason I knew that it was because it worked just like that on the ghost chains. So on the ghost chains, there was no liquidity. <clears throat> ghost chains, me. Mean like, you mean like ETH proof of work? Yeah, it worked. Yeah. Ju it, it worked just the same. It's just that in very low, like if you go back and look at it, it worked just the same, but in very low, uh, 
low amounts because obviously they didn't have as much you know volume and 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 as much as liquidity as we had here but then back over there it actually worked even better because over there uh what would happen is you would dca into it super super easy low very slippage trades and then get as much as you could right and once you had your bag people would just like like throw like big old bags of it they're fair and then your thing would double and triple and then you would do the exact same thing just very little uh slippage no slippage trades out of it into hex maker uh, uh icosa it's just there was just no liquidity over there so you had to like make your own liquidity it's kind of and there was like a triple ratio thing happening between like the dollar and ethereum and ethereum fair it yeah was a fucking mess but it ended up yeah. being a good strategy for pulse then because it worked out it was a good test bed, I guess, suppose. But yeah, man, I guess maybe I, I should have probably paid more attention because um, everybody was talking about, oh, Hex is going to go to parity on EW. And I was just like, no, probably not. Mm, I see what probably mean. not. Yeah, no, I, but, I, I, but then yeah. I, think I wrote it. Like, there were still a lot of things we could have learned from that. And I was just like, that yeah, probably wrote exactly. it off. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Because what I learned about that was was that, that it, it the PI narrative is all about where you got in because like I said, if you got in if you did it the other way around, like let's say that you took your big old bag of pulse and then on day one you threw it in to die, now you're you freaking wrecked because then all the way till August it was like dumping, 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 dumping. So that's why I mean that's why I did those videos on die because I wanted to explain to everyone because my original fear was that people were gonna dump their big old bags of pulse into USDC and then Circle was gonna be like, bye bitches. And then I was like, oh, shit. You know, there was going to be a lot of people like thinking. Circle can always invalidate it. You know, that's the thing about Circle or Tether. But but the crazy thing is that those are still pegged because of the arbitrage from Maker. Yep. So, like, that's crazy. Yeah, be I'm, careful with those. Cause I, ho yeah, my, I my, hope that uh, <laughs> I'm just out here praying that Circle doesn't shut that off because they could. You know, that's called stablecoin risk, obviously. Right by but, my, uh, I was going to say, like, that was the other thing is I was like, you know, that at one point they'll, they'll come in, especially when the SEC – you know, stop messing with Richard and uh, they'll they'll want because they, they they want USDC and Circle everywhere. They they just started uh, doing this thing with BlackRock the other day. So that was another video that we were doing because we were talking about how USDC could turn into a CBDC really, really easy because it doesn't have to be like directly coming from the Fed. It can just be a, a, a coin, a tool, whatever that you call it that at any point in time they can invalidate they can print as much as possible they can talk to the fed and get all kinds of digits point back into well, their that's account a good so. Honestly, that, that's a reasonable like I, i'm actually predicting the same thing is that usdc will just become the cbdc because they're already in bed with jp morgan they already have been, exactly they, uh, I, I think, I think the CBDC is already here and it's called usdc and it's kind of like you know that's, yeah. that goes back to the frogs and boiling water thing yeah exactly it's like they're pumping us our markets now so it's kind of like oh shit we're not we didn't get into crypto for this but it's kind of like man it's good <laughs> so it's yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. Like, but we'll see when it gets to the rh ecosystem like, uh, we get some of that money over here yeah, well guys no, i'm gonna head out because i got to uh get out of here here at 10 but thank you so much for having me and and having the uh the FN hangout so have fun yeah, man. good to see you bro. Yeah, good to chat good to see ib but yeah, you know USDC is out here, and they're just like, uh, well, you know, JP Morgan's got their hands around it, and they're just like, hey, uh, Brian Armstrong, you know, um, the CUSC thing, C thing here, right? It's got a couple billion market cap. Uh, we we can shut it off whenever we want to, right? And Brian's like, yeah, sure. And they're like, okay, well, that's all we need to know. Like, we we can whitelist and blacklist people, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's basically all we wanted to do anyway. Like be able to shut you off whenever you want to so uh hey correct yeah. me correct me right. if i'm wrong isn't uh is p is algorithmic correct p is based off collateral yeah okay so it, it's in the it's considered an algorithmic stable coin is that correct yeah 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 technically yeah gotcha yeah and I, I think honestly given the fallout of luna look i know something can be completely different it can be a completely different uh you know code everything could be completely different but i think a big uh i think there's a large amount of cascading trust when it comes to algorithmic stable coins in the wake of luna um 
you know. Well, yeah, just, they got, everyone's got a bad taste in their mouth. They, they hear yeah, it yeah. Like, oh, I'm not for sure. But like, for sure. I mean, Luna literally was a different case because they had their own block. It, it was based off of a. Their collateral was like a separate token that they invented that like created death spiral. Like yeah. it, when, when you collateralize things at a safe level and you have mechanisms in place to protect it if it ever goes under, where they auto people automatically get liquidated. It's almost like like liquid loans and all that stuff. Like it, it's a or liquidity. These protocols have worked out a lot better than Luna. Um, Luna was actually there was a stable coin before Luna that it was kind of copied after that actually blew up first. And, uh, yeah, it, and the relationship between Luna and UST, like it can it can be for anybody that does any sort of research into the matter, they can see where Luna failed. But the problem that we're running into is how many people are truly doing their own research. I mean. You know, at the end of the day, people are looking for an opportunity to make quick money fast. And, you know, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is the latest hype. And the last thing they heard about anything stable coin that starts with an A, algorithmic, anything like that, they're going to look back to Luna. So, well, that's the you know, problem. I, and, and exactly. That, 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 exactly. That brings, up a, that brings up a question for all you guys. And I, I do have to get going soon, but like, um pulse chain has so far relatively been safe yes i know a couple things wrong like pulse trailer park or like uh what else uh that one uh that one beat beat root beat root, beat root right but th these were like relatively small rugs and i'm i'm just like going to bed every night thinking like jesus christ i hope one of these big protocols doesn't like have a fatal flaw not like an intentional rug but just like a, a flaw in the code that would yeah. be yeah. catastrophic to many many users like we've heard fought around like liquid loans. We've heard fought around like those kind of things. Like I think the Oracle is a risk, but that's of course, that's a risk you're going to get anywhere. Um, I just, I hope that no, nobody loses a shit ton of money on a popular protocol. Uh, but what do you, is there anything on your guys' radar that you're like, watch out for this shit? Hmm. The only thing on my radar is I think me personally, I'm still kind of skeptical about any launch pads and stuff that goes through the launch pads. Sure. And just because we are trying to create more decentralized launch pads on Pulse Chain doesn't mean it's impossible to have these. Sorry, what was that? Relaunch pads. Yeah, the relaunch pads. It's 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 an improved system, but it's still possible to have rugs. So I, that's one of the flaws that I could see. And then at the same time, the only other thing I could think of is like maybe the fact that this is still a relatively small chain and it's very much possible if like some giant whale wanted to come in and try to throw weight around, it's possible to highly affect the ecosystem. However, at the same time, though, if that does happen, that means that more capital was onboarded to the chain, which you might not like where it went. But at the same time, that's still more value on chain. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a good point about... um about uh fucking launch pads because it's, it's it's almost at the discretion of the launch pad owners who they take on sometimes and let's just hope that they have enough you know i mean you, it's, it's hard to scam through a launch pad but you can do some pretty advanced scams anyway one of the things though is that when it comes to scams i think people kind of get an idea in their head like we're in the world of crypto everything's like super high tech you can get scammed by the lazarus group in north korea hacking your metamask and stealing your own private keys off your hard drive it's like no in reality the vast vast majority of attacks are very low iq threat vector attacks aka the nigerian prince asking you to yep. send him bitcoin so he'll send you two back yep. It's just different fishing. generations of that. It's it's a lot of phishing. It's a lot of like, it's the weakness is not your computer. The weakness is the person sitting in the chair. You can't get defeated by yourself. It, it's impossible to compromise hardware. It's possible to get drained if you download malware. However, that kind of complexity requires a lot more effort and it's so much easier. And so the, the availability of anyone to create some Twitter account with an anime profile picture then go try to convince people to give them their seed phrase that the the ease and availability will always beat trying to develop sophisticated attack vectors sure i, Next. Know, I feel like i just spewed <laughs> on that one a bit i think that the thing to watch out for i don't i don't necessarily have any like red flags or, or warning signs as far as like um like types of projects to watch out for the thing i look out for is people who are not of like substantive character and I just generally stay away from that sort of thing. 
that's that's the biggest thing is like when I notice people start to do scummy things and it's like, um, probably should do stuff that they're doing. Probably should get involved with stuff that they're involved in. That's probably like, like that. That's my my best indicator. You know, it's hard though because like we've we've seen people like the, they say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So we've seen people even trying their best that fuck up in crypto. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, when you fuck up, you lose a bunch. Like so, like luckily, like Donovan's mistake was relatively benign, and uh, the because he made everybody whole again. And like right. he's, I like him. He's an awesome guy. We hung out. Like he's cool. He made a little bit of a stupid mistake, but he fixed it. And yeah. but I'm like that that's an example of like Icarus flying too close to the sun almost. It's like, you know, you, you want not the not the token, not the token you fuckers. Uh but uh, <laughs> yeah, the uh the fact that anybody can just make a simple mistake and even though they were trying their best, and I'm not I'm not picking on Donovan like because he's I wouldn't call that a failure because he, he relaunched and it's like fine. But it's not catastrophic, but yeah, it wasn't like terrible, but uh I mean, the chart looked bad at first, so everyone was like, oh, my God, rug!" But it's like, you know, let's see if he, let's, you know, let's see what happens, and then he fixed it. But uh, yep. th that could happen with, like, we saw this with the Dodeca guy. Remember Dodeca? <laughs> yeah, I do, yeah. Oh, I like think it's some icosahedron 12-sided shape thing. Dude, Dodeca the just the made, like, pentagons. A yeah, yeah, he made a collection token, and he, he did have good intentions. He was, like, very pro-hacks, pro the community. He just made like a bad design in the code and uh, it ended up just, I don't, I don't exactly remember what happened, but it rugged and people got mad at him and we've never heard from him again. So, yeah. Crazy. I think as the ecosystem gets bigger too, um, you know, right now we have a lot of projects, a lot of builders, but just imagine fast forward like a year from now, if a protocol is, you know, brings into question and kind of goes down. It, hopefully, it wouldn't be as much of, of an attack vector on the entire ecosystem and and be that negative. Right now, if something like you said LL affected us, it would hurt pretty bad. But you know, fast forward like a year from now, if that the same situation happened, it may not hurt as much because we'd be just that much bigger, and it wouldn't be as much of a an attack vector on everyone. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm talking about like a critical zero day exploit, you know. Yeah, like, I mean, and that one would like, suck. That one would suck. Yeah, that one would suck. I mean, which of course, like you can't like let that keep you up at night because we could always be scared. What if a meteor hits the earth tomorrow? Right? Yeah, we could always be. Like, yeah. There's always going to be unknown unknowns, and that's crypto for you. Yep, that's true. Hey, coffee. I know you said you're gonna hop out yeah. a bit but i did want to ask you about one thing in particular and that is the the pulse wars project everyone <laughs> has their different uh creator tags do you have a uh, any insight on what you're going to be doing with your organized forces over there dude i i know ali kane we talked on the phone he's a cool dude i think everyone's got their nft project honestly i feel outnumbered on this one i feel like everyone's got their own little sub communities i'm just over here like you gave me a you gave me a token why like <laughs> what the fuck like, I mean, so look, if anybody wants to join me on the Pulse Wars, I'd be, uh, I guess I'd appreciate it because the prize is literally 1 billion Pulse. That's nothing to laugh at. Yeah. That's, a, that's a lot of fucking money. Um, and it's a kind of a, a fun way to put your NFTs to the test. But um, yeah, man, I guess this, is, this whole thing was kind of sprung on me. So I haven't rallied the troops yet, but um, if you're an OG <laughs> follower, subscriber, if you like what I do, if you want to join my team, I guess I have a team. I didn't, I didn't even start the team. I just have a team. So, uh, yeah. Um, I don't even have any NFTs, do I? No problem. Yeah, well, just say hi quickly. I don't know. Just wanted to throw it out Yo. because I, it's, it's definitely a tip of the hat to you at the minimum, which is, I think Ali was like, all right, yeah, coffee's one of the biggest guys in the space. Let's all right, so, so wouldn't, wouldn't it be funny if I just like pulled some numbers, some pulled some guesses out of my ass for like the whole thing and actually won? Like <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. So, so like, don't, don't follow me to win, but follow me if you like me. And if we win, they will just be that much more hilarious. That's true. I know RG3 has been trying to hype people up when he had uh, Ali on the stream because RG3 also has the, uh, the captains, I think it is. And then uh, we don't have our own tag, but crypto black sheep does have his own tag, which is the DGENs tag. So cool. if anything, we might just band onto that one. Yeah, dude. Well, do whatever you want, man. But, uh, I'm in. I'm out of my element, dude. NFTs are not my my thing. 
So let's all just put them to let's let's go to war with each other in NFT land and let's see who the fuck wins. <laughs> well, it's that, but honestly, this is this is kind of the fantasy football of trading, which is it's you make your plays. It really, that's a great way to put it. It's a great way to put it. Yeah, it's fantasy football with different level right, classes. Right, 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 if you get yeah. certain ones, you can make more or less trades, or depending on which coins you get. So, crypto stylus. Yeah, we're just in the house. The the frat of getting rich. Good frat. It's called uh, what? What are the Greek letters for H E X? I don't. Oh man. H? Epsilon chi. Uh, some, something epsilon chi. <laughs> Huh. Hold on. What what is H in Greek letter? There might not be uh Ada. E T A. Yeah. Or Hada. Capital A. Ada Epsilon H. Chi. Welcome to the frat of Ada Epsilon Chi. In order to do your uh, rituals to do your ritual sacrifice, you must lose ninety nine percent of your portfolio if you'd like to join. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, well, it's either that or you show up to the uh, the annual Hex conference in Las Vegas and you get indoctrinated that way. Right. Oh, you don't yeah. want to know what happened. Yeah, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, all I'm saying is that if the Vegas meetup was wild, if we can get this New York City meetup to happen, that could also be a good time. Look, New York City be- is a fun city. I'll say that that'll much. Be- That'll be historic, dude. That'll be historic. I do have to go. I um, I gotta go take a piss. It was great to see all you guys. Compassion, Josh. Later, brother. Will. Adios. We'll yeah, see brother. you, bro. Appreciate it, man. Please. I'll uh, I'll DM you. Try to get you back on the show soon, man. Appreciate it. Anytime. Later. Peace. That is awesome. Absolute legend, right there. What a guy. Yeah. Oh, speaking oh, of guys. Oh shit. Fresh from out from uh, under the four hundred five overpass. That's yeah, right, fellas. J. What you sipping on there, boss? Oh. What's going on, Jay? How you doing, somebody. bud? Give me one second. Ah, oh, there we go. I'm doing good. How about you guys? How you guys doing tonight? Life doing is good, good, man. Life is good. It's Friday night. Got a got a good conversation going here. So life is definitely good. So it was Friday night, and none of us have anything to do, huh? <laughs> this is the thing nope. we do. What are you talking about? Yeah. Hey, it is, it is, it is. This is actually nice. This is actually nice. I, I like the new camera angle, Jay. That's excellent, bro. Good blocking oh. and stuff. Oh yeah. When I uh earlier on today, I uh I just got home from work. I freaking I just quickly threw it on and I was on. This is good though, bro. You're hopping right into the stream in life. You're gonna be an influencer here. Uh, yeah. I got nowhere for nobody to follow me, so <laughs> you gotta get you no a Twitter. YouTube that's channel. the nope. That's the step. No, nope. he said, "Yeah, I'm good. I'll just hop on when you guys are on." Right, that's fair. There you go. I hey, like real, it. Real, with you. real quick, real quick. I just I want to shout out the chat here, real quick. Uh, and right when I'm saying that, brother sixty four comes in with the uh, ten dollar hey. Canadian super chat. Shout out, brother sixty four. Chat's on fire tonight, man. Um, you know, I like to say that when we're streaming on our channel, but. Uh, there have been some really good conversations going on in the chat, and the chat is extremely – they were extremely engaged in the PDI conversation. So uh, so shout out there. Uh, they were also engaged in the NFT talks and everything like that. So big uh, big shout out to the chat. You guys are awesome. Hey, we got uh, a couple slots available. If anybody else wants to hop on, we're going to keep the conversation going probably for another, you know, maybe 30 minutes. Uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, if that. Uh, but yeah, please, links in the description. You guys hop on. No experience necessary, guys. All right. Uh, if you got a camera, you know, you want to turn it on, we, hop on. Clearly, no experience necessary. Yeah. Hop right on. You're becoming experienced. What is this, stream number four for you? Uh, Hell yeah, yeah, bro. This would be number four. Stream, yeah, man. stream four, yeah. like, what is it? It's like two weeks, bro. This is, this is good. This is great. Yeah, yeah. That's what I feel, Mike, Will, Will said you should get on the stream. Him and Nate were always saying get on the stream. I'm like, fine. I'll go ahead and grab a mic and a camera real quick. Hop Good on. Stuff. That's excellent. Good Yo, stuff. Uh, hey, uh, go ahead, Josh. Yeah, I was just gonna ask. Compassion, real quick. Um, what do you see happening throughout 2024? Where do you see the market in, let's say, three months? Where do you see it in six months? Where do you see it by December? What do you foresee happening in the market in 2024? 
You talking crypto, macro? Yeah. Uh, look, I'll, t- I like I'll tell you both. what, whatever you feel like answer. Yeah. If you want to answer both, definitely. Uh, mostly crypto, but if you have a macro pro- projection as well, you know, interested I mean, in what you think. I mean, as far as macro goes, I mean, I think America and everything else, I, I see that, you know, it's heavy sledding for a lot of people. No doubt about it, right? I mean, it's tough out here. Uh, within crypto, you got some really big players that are um, really looking for crypto to be a home run hitter for them. You know, whether it's the Black Rocks, you know, all that kind of stuff. As much as we don't like them, maybe, you know, entering the space and it's kind of, you know, counter culture to what we uh, were seeking, you know, to get away from governments and corporate entities, what have you. Um, I think we're special and unique within our ecosystem that it's a situation where, you know, they, they joke about it as a time traveler within the uh, legal documents, but I think we do have a time traveler within our ecosystem, you know, and that everyone is in this ecosystem is the right place at the right time. And I believe that, um, you know, when RH talks about, you know, the shining city on the hill, I'm not trying to be the cheerleader of, you know, I know that price is down right now, but I think great things are in store for us in, in full stream. No doubt about it. Um, when I'm not going to within 24, 24, 24. Yeah. I think we'll, we'll, we'll have a good taste of, of exactly that euphoric, you know, taste that, you know, some people have endured that. I know I've endured it. It's a special feeling. Um, shoot. I endured it just this week. I was involved with, uh, you know, solid X. Uh, I was in some special groups that, you know, we, uh, help put that together. I mean, that was one week and it hit. Just imagine an entire ecosystem in that hitting, you know? So um, a lot of people have had their time to shine in other ecosystems. I believe our founder, uh, RH, is patient. He's more time-tested than many others in crypto. And so he's in a a special situation where he can sit back and and, and read the markets better than almost anyone, Um, especially if he's a time traveler. So um, that being said, he's patient and he's waiting. And we've all seen what he's doing on chain with Ethereum. Come on. Let that sucker 3X or 4X and you know where it's coming. You start printing green candles. It's get, consider, consider if that turns into $2 billion, consider how many, how many, uh, and this is not me trying to spill the tea on what, you know, that stuff, but just imagine how many people will follow, especially when they're in profit. Especially when they're in profit and they're looking for the next giddy up. What's the next giddy up? You know what I mean? True DeFi. Especially if if October rolls around and he wins a case. True giddy up. You know what I mean? And so the stars could truly align. And that's all, you know, within 2024. So. Makes sense. Zenith, uh, you got anything to comment on there? Uh. This is a this year. There's a lot of I think there's macro events that can affect both like traditional econ markets or specifically crypto. Obviously, we got the happening coming up in like what nine days, something like that. That's one of the news or talking points we've been hammering for like since the last happening, honestly. So four years. And then on top of that, it is an election year and tends to get a little bit of rocky during election years on both sides of the house. However, at the same time, though, when it comes to actual legislation, I don't think anything is going to get done that's going to touch crypto this year because people are going to be much more focused on other kind of like hot topic issues. And crypto has a tendency to fall by the wayside in that. However, at the same time, though, we do have the Bitcoin ETFs that came out and have absolutely pumped us just beyond what anybody thought was possible at this point in the market. And we also now have the possibility of the ETH ETFs coming out either in May august possibly later so as far as three months from now it's possible to chop sideways a little bit or maybe have a small correction especially since we pumped so high so fast with bitcoin going all the way up to was it seventy four thousand dollars so having a bit of a correction today but it's possible to get some more when we get to towards the end of the year it's definitely i could see a hundred thousand dollar bitcoin And then as a result, the rest of the market's going to go from there. We've already seen Solana do what pretty much like a 20 X and all coins are going to start picking up later on. But I got to say right now, Bitcoin does seem to be leading the market. 
And then when it comes to traditional fine traditional finance, obviously we had the CPI numbers come out on the 10th of the month for March, and it was not good. Inflation was back up at 3.5% year over year. And this is right after Jerome Powell got on the mic and said, yeah, we're going to be taking into account the data a lot more trying to do a rate reduction this year because the, remember the original narrative back in December of 2023 was that they wanted to do three rate cuts in 2024. We have seen zero and I think there's only four more uh, Fed meetings before the actual election. I want to say the last Fed meet the Fed meeting is on November 7th elections on November 5th. So until then and with the news that we just got with inflation and they're trying to come combat it. I don't see a rates drop in any time soon possibly in june but if they do that might be the only one for the year as a result of that go for it and i was gonna say i think seven percent eight percent i think that's gonna come the new norm for a little while i i honestly think that that's that's probably where it's gonna i mean look it might come down slightly uh you know once the stuff gets ironed out but I mean, it's, you know i know I've at least been talking with Brendan and you on the show over the last six months talking about what inflation is going to look like and how the Fed is going to react to certain situations. And we're just in a situation now, man, where, uh, yeah, I, I, I think all the rate cut talk was extremely premature. And it's always good to have a plan until the numbers come out. You know what I'm saying? And then you see the actual real raw data. And uh, the real raw data just isn't it's not uh, it's not supporting that sort of thing. So um, definitely agree when it comes to the yeah. Richard Hart ecosystem. I think it actually is a slightly different narrative than the rest of the market. And that's specifically due to all the SEC stuff with. I mean, when the SEC dropped the case against, or st- created the case against Richard Hart, we saw the price drop like what? 60 percent in one day. And then since then, there's just been a pretty big depression. I think you're going to see an opposite effect in October come uh, Richard Hart just dunking on the SEC, which is that there's a decent chance that all of Pulse Chain, Pulse X, Hex is going to lag behind the market for a bit, as we've seen it's been doing. And then once those obstacles get cleared out of the way, that's just going to be that slingshot, and it just goes it goes hard. Mm-hmm. Oh, if, if you're you muted, think I'm wrong, farmer. please tell me. Yeah, yeah farmer, there you go. There we go. There we go. I just wanted to add to the uh, rate cut talk. Uh, like you yeah. said, I think there was a lot of wishful thinking that the Fed was going to cut the rates. The, the Fed said what they wanted to do, but certain conditions needed to get met, which one of them, the main ones was inflation. If you this whole time, have, as they've been raising the rates, we've been going to the store. Prices are not coming down. Inf- Everything just gets more expensive. So it was all wishful thinking. These conditions have not been met. They're not even close to being met. So the Fed said they were they want to cut rates. They say they want to, but they are not going to do it unless they get inflation under 2%. And I don't see that happening anytime soon. Uh, the data is also showing that it's not changing. I mean, the narrative that we gotten was that we had the peak of inflation in, let's see, I got my chart here in front of me, June of 2022. That was about... 9% inflation. Since then, we dropped down to about 3% inflation in June of 2023. But since then, it's really just bounced back and forth between 4 and 3%. And keep in mind, 2% is the target inflation rate. And the general idea or the narrative at the time was we were around here, we saw that it was coming down, we were expecting it to dip down again lower. But honestly, it's just kind of plateaued, which was not expected. It has I mean, made change. Those are the official new- rates. Not the real rates. Those are just the official rates. We all know it's higher than that. Yep. True. The, these yep. are the rates as they have chosen to measure them. Yep. Do with that what you will. And the the way that they've measured inflation has changed over the last two years, I do believe. I think we covered that news story like probably four or five months ago. So, yeah, yeah I mean... Yeah, and that's imperative. That's imperative. What you said there—it's how they choose to report it. It's you know, it's, it's, it, I, I don't, I don't know. It's it, it's exactly what you said. It's how they choose to report it. Um, it might not be the rawest data that's available. It might just be doctored up. So, this is a similar thing with the CPI report for unemployment as well. 
uh, we talk about inflation and interest rates as if it's a binary scale, but one of the dirty little secrets is that it's actually more of a triangle, which is that the Fed looks at trying to keep unemployment at sustainable levels and solid pr and steady prices as well. So in the last FOMC meeting, Jerome Powell did talk about how they will be keeping an eye on unemployment. And if the unemployment rate rises drastically, that might be a sign that they want to cut rates, even though it kind of goes contrary to the inflation data. By the way, we got a new person joining us. Who we got? Apprehensive? Hey, fellas. How are you doing this evening? Hey, what's going on, man? What's on your mind? Um, No, I was very interested in what what you're commenting on earlier when coffee was on with the um the tropa system and you know PDI possibly peg into a dollar um you know just if conversation rolls back around today you know definitely has some input to you know talk about some things and so uh, i will say Scott. this much i will say this much imagine maybe some future projects that might come out and there's certain people that might want to take some PDI and pair it with their coin and do some of the deep web type of tropa stuff with within their group. So there is the possibility that there's other subset groups outside of just a tropa and people who have the narrative and belief that maybe PDI can continue to make its parabolic rise and reach that with the belief that maybe having a stable coin such as PDI within the ecosystem is a, is a powerful thing. So. Yeah. Apprehensive. Uh, what were your thoughts? What did, uh, what did you want to uh, comment on in regards to the conversation well, earlier? Well, with, with um, my research and, you know, just information I gathered, um, I don't know if everyone else sees it this way, but, I think Richard Hart is really trying to help us to view things differently instead of being having like following a traditional um, four year um, schedule that Bitcoin follows where you get in, you buy low, you sell high. Um, he's really trying to set the table for us to be like owners of a casino as it would be with um, uh, Pulse X, um, you know. And I say this because, you know, the moves that he's making, then with the um, 414 de dev, you know, um, trying to peg the, you know, PDI to a dollar and using liquidity to, you know, to to do that, you know, it, it's, it's showing us a different way to um, not only make gains, but hold these gains and, you know, profit from them. Um, that was very, very interesting to me. Um, you know, I'm still learning a whole lot more about this also, but uh, definitely it has my attention. And then like um, the previous day when they had Almighty on um, DJ Roundtable, you know, I, I saw that video. It's a lot of alpha, you know, that, that you know, was in that um, on that segment. Um, you know, there's this young guy coming in and, and you know, developing a coin and, and he's developing a whole ecosystem around that. And he's emphasizing, you know, the gains are in liquidity providing, not in just waiting for your token to go up. You know, that caught my attention, you know. So um yeah, I was I to delve by even deeper. Man. It was a very impressive, young man. Yeah. And you know, it, it's got me thinking, you know, um, if we um can control, if we're the first ones in, if we can control and and have you know very, very thick liquidity throughout the whole ecosystem, you know, we're the kings. We're the ones that that control everything. The people come in and they they plan a casino, but you know, we're the ones in the background that really control everything, you know. But um, that's something that, you know, everybody has to, you know, see. I mean, I see it. Um, I, I'm, I wanna learn more, you know. And then on top of that, we're the most educated community because we, you know, we 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 had we know all of these uh of how liquidity functions you know how to um make meme coins and stuff it's not it's nothing like solana where you know most of all of the the meme coins that come out they're just rugs you know out mm -hmm. for a day and liquidity gone if you don't know if you don't know someone or you're on the end when these coins come out there's no possible way that you can make any gains you know 
you, you, you're just part of liquidity that's, that's, that's going out. You're losing. So, you know, I see post chain. It can be like Solana, but it can be a whole lot better. You know, mm -hmm. we can keep all of the liquidity on our chain. And it, it doesn't have to be a place where it's just about, you know, rugs or, you know, the quick gains in and out. You know, that can be something a whole lot more to it, a whole lot better. Makes sense. So if you're talking about liquidity is going to be the way to provide value, what do you think about projects that go cross chain? Because I want to say it was Gophers was the one that was a Solana and Pulse chain project, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Ethereum, yeah. Yeah. So when with stuff like that, what do you see? Well, there's definitely a place for that. It, I don't see all projects going cross chain. Um, and, and Makes sense. Still, it can present an opportunity to bring others from that are on other chains that see, you know, like Solana chain is their home and introduce them to something that's on Pulse chain and have them come check out and see like, hey, let me see what's going on over here. Um, and it then and it can produce opportunity to to make gains on other chains also for you. So, you know, because if you look at Gophers right now, uh, pretty much um, the price, except for the Digian chain. Um, the price of golfers is kind of you know the same across the board theorem solana post chain you know exception of a few hundred bucks but you know it's pretty much the same fair enough i was gonna say i think one of the advantages of pulse chain is that a lot of the people that have been building projects over here have been building projects with an eye at passive income or passive income strategies i know you say liquidity is one of the ways to kind of make some some gains other than just chart going up but there's a lot of ways to do that over here and i think it's honestly just a mindset in this ecosystem that's what i see anyway mm -hmm. it most definitely is a way to make gains you know just by you know hodling or or providing liquidity or you know um, there's other means but once you make those gains to hold on to them because i don't just see making gains and then out to you know you know moving all of your, your gains you've made out to fiat again no that's not the answer you know if if things come to fruition and, and things happen like they should and in a tropa in an entropic system p dot does go to peg a dollar really there's no need for us to go off chain anymore you know all of all of the gains that we make we can stay right on chain the profits we make we never have to go back into the 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 traditional federal, you know, monetary system again. It's not necessary. That's a, I that's see a that happen I've, in the future. I got something to you know, add on the liquidity for providing. Um, I mean, I know the main reason why we're in some of these farms is to make money. But I think it's it's also important to think about what liquidity providing does for the community. If mm -hmm. enough of us small folk get together there's just hundreds thousands of us right providing liquidity pools so we're the community we're like the bank we're, we're, we're the we're the medium of exchange and nobody can rug that from us if if, mm -hmm. if we're built on a community where where people believe in providing liquidity then there's always going to be a system in place where we can trade back and forward where where somebody that's not in the community can't just come and rug us we're providing our own liquidity on pulse chain there there isn't any the, the, it, the post chain is the, the community's providing liquidity. You look at nine inch, these other, these other exchanges that launch, the, the, these aren't, the, these aren't big players that are coming into these communities. It's, it's just random people putting in small amounts, some a few thousand, some a few hundred. Now we do have people that have more money and are putting tens of thousands into these projects. But for the most part, a lot of people are just putting in a couple hundred bucks or a couple, couple thousand dollars here and there into these farms. And, and on top of that, also, um, the thicker the liquidity, the more that all of us understand how liquidity providing works and, you know, establishing thick community throughout the ecosystem. The What happened like earlier today where this guy dropped what, um, how many billions of, of Pulse X on the market and it just tanked the price of mm -hmm. Pulse and Pulse X, you know, stuff like that won't happen. Or even if he does drop it, Though that that all of that um that he sold out it'd be ate up real quick, you know, 
there'll be people to buy it up very quickly. Hey, good, uh, good topics of conversation. We got a question here in the chat. I think this is going to be a really good question to sort of wrap up the stream with. Um, so Plummer wants to know, uh, do you think eHex is dead or do you see this as a huge buying opportunity? So, uh, I, I'm going to open the floor up to anybody who wants to give their perspective, their answer. If you want to answer, feel free. If you don't want to answer, that's fine. Uh, just, but I'm going to open up the floor just quickly. Even if you do think it's dead at this price, I mean, why not take a chance? I mean, you don't have to throw a lot of money at it, but I mean, at these prices, it's like, why the hell not? good point anybody else anybody uh have any thoughts on this i don't think it is for a number of reasons you got whales and then at some point when ethereum gets their head out of their ass and they decide to fix a lot of their um, fee issues at some point they will it, it doesn't hurt enough right now but throughout the process of this bull market when people are um crying and moaning and they the foundation looks at it and says gosh people are actually paying like you know again a thousand two thousand dollars for transaction fees and people are going other places and they realize that they'll finally fix it do they have the do they have the solution to the problem probably but they've been making a lot of money you know doing what they're doing um and so at some point it will get fixed and at some point i, I believe that um I know what Briz is probably saying, but when those things get fixed, then yes, I think there's a lot of whales that are involved and they want to see it continue to be successful. And there's still a ton of money on, um, there she is, the queen. <laughs> there's, a, there's still a ton of money on Ethereum. So that being said, I'm not aping into it. I'm just saying I don't think it's going to be dead. That's all I'm saying. I got you. I'll, I'll, throw, I'll throw in my two cents. I think it's dead right now. It's dead right now. Yep. Can it come back? Yep. Absolutely, it can come back. But it's dependent on the market. There has to be a a need and a driving force behind bringing it back to life. Will that happen? I don't know. But right now, the market's saying that it's dead. So, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. Can it come back? Absolutely, it can come back. Uh, there's certainly enough whales in the system to, you know, throw a ton of money into it to sort of you know get get some some life revived back into it but uh it's something that we'll have to wait and see uh but as of right now if you were to ask me now absolutely yeah it's dead right now but it could be different a month six months a year two three years from now so those are my two cents yeah. um i wouldn't go to sleep on ehex um, um it does present a, a great opportunity in the future I think I, I just I'm not I'm not gonna um, doubt E Hicks. You know, it's the OG. So um, yeah, and, and, most and when I right say, now, and when I say it's dead, I'm not saying I doubt it or anything right now because honestly, like this is the point where if you're going to earn generational wealth off of a pump, off of a coin, it's in a situation like this. All right. It's when it's dead, it's gone, it's forgotten. Everybody else has forgotten about it. That's when you pull the plug on it. That's when you throw money into it. And then if it comes back, it comes back. Um, yeah. So ultimately, if if you still have conviction, buy it up. Uh, I'm just saying right now in its present state, absolutely. But the market says that it's dead. Uh, that's not me saying it. The market says that it's currently dead. I don't think people would say it's officially back until you eat up that freaking bank X cell wall. Once, once that happens, I think people will start having faith in it again. Well, hello everyone. Good evening. <laughs> What's up, Georgia? <laughs> What's up, Aloha. guys? Hey, a lot hey. of here. I say you need a you need a girl here. Girls, where <laughs> are you? No, we, we need, need a woman. Absolutely. We need a woman in here. Absolutely. I, I love to hear. I love oh, to hear all of you talking. I've been learning and taking notes, but you know, um, did we talk enough about Richard? You know, that's my favorite subject. And you were talking about Hex, which is also one of my favorite subjects. I don't think Hex is it's dead. We can still do Hex from Ethereum and Pulse Chain as wrapped Hex. So mm -hmm. Hex is like King Kong and Godzilla. King Kong never yeah. dies. You can also buy it on Matic. Yep. That too. That too. I don't know much about those protocols, but um, 
I think Hex, Hex is it's a product made by Richard Hart. Mm-hmm. Period. I don't have anything else. It's a drop, mic drop. Um, we can still work with Hex in Pulse Chain. Richard Hart created Pulse Chain for us to be able to do the transactions I do for people like me, small people, to be able to get into crypto. I cannot do it if it was on Ethereum. I'll be honest with you. I will not be able to get into the game, but I it's possible because I have Pulse Chain. So Hex is Hex, and it's the best crypto ever invented. That's my humble opinion, like Lid would say. But yeah. we have it on Pulse Chain, and we have wrapped hex hex on pulse the actual hex like richard calls it it is better than the e-hex it doesn't mean that e-hex is not good enough so Uh, let me say this real quick too imagine an ethereum etf goes through and you have big money you have goldman sachs you have blackrock and they're all investing in ethereum and then they start looking at where can they get yield? And the easiest <laughs> the easiest route for them to get yield is on Ethereum blockchain, and it happens to be Hex. They're not comfortable with maybe bridging over to Pulse Chain yet, but the gateway drug for that for that yield is right there, especially as the adoption continues and Hex starts to melt faces on Pulse Chain and they realize well the same same contract is on ethereum and we can get the same yield over here it's a higher fee but we don't care we have billions yeah and not only that just remember this what's going to happen right now bitcoin is almost impossible to get for you know everyday people only big corporations are able to get bitcoin then what's going to be next ethereum right what's Mm going to be after ethereum it's not you know approachable or or able to for us to get it what's going to do people's going to start looking for things i'm telling you right now richard and and the legal team is making history it's going to hit the news and we have to be ready october 24th guys be ready because after that and i have a lot of faith on the legal team and i've been looking at the papers they have prepared they're very aggressive uh they know what they're doing and I don't think um, any judge will not take into consideration that strong of, of, a, of, of, of a case that they prepared. They're prepared to go for the kill. The SEC is not. So let's see what happened. We're going to be there. Are you guys going to be there on the 24th of October? I will. I I'm, I'm, I'm already. want to be. Yeah. Yes, I'm already booking my flight, guys. And you know what? One important thing is for us to write to the local media. You can do it, Mm -hmm. uh, the Associate Press, just a nice, simple, you know, phone call. If you don't want to write an email, guess what? You can pick up the phone and do a tip. Call the assignment desk. Call all the assignment desks. Not only the local ones, but call the national, like, you know, all the CNNs, so MSNBC, all of the shows. You guys watch a show, you know what? Those shows have a phone number that you can call with a tip line. Just call them and tell them, hey, guys, this is going on. Call them the day before so they can get ready. Call them the day off. It is very important that we contact the media. It doesn't matter if it's local. It could be international. Because you know what happened? Let's say I am in Los Angeles. I'm in Los Angeles. I call the station here in Los Angeles and tell them something big is going on. It's They cover national news. So guess what they're going to do? They're going to call the New York station and they're going to say, hey, guys, are you covering this? We heard a tip. It's it's important. Can you get us footage? So they're going to send someone from the news and they're going to get at least footage or an interview or something. Um, That is something very important. If any of you have any contacts or equipment or people who can film and do interviews, do it. If you're in New York and you can get interviews, it doesn't matter if you're professional or not. Just get the footage and get it to the media. They they need a lot of material to cover empty spaces they have for the news. So if not, um, pin me up and I'll tell you what to do. Yeah, I think there's enough uh, people on social media that cover posts and hacks that if there were a large turnout, they can actually make it go viral just on social media alone. That's how- Oh, that's yeah, true. Sure. Yeah, they could, 
they could trend yeah. that easily. Yeah. Yeah. Be- just with the amount of streamers and, and people on, on Instagram and people that are on Twitter and how Richard Hart likes to tweet. And you even, you're starting even Bit Boys. They probably get Bit Boys attention as well, something that big, or some of the bigger crypto channels. You, you'll, you'll get exposure. Everything counts. Everything counts. Get the newspaper. Call your local newspaper. No, I, Look no, at the. the- the, the I, I, farmer, like, like, it's I, just social media hear me. Is really bad. Now, hear like, me. Like, I don't have social media. I don't like it, but that's hear me. reality. What do you watch, true. farmer? What do you watch? I'm just on YouTube all day. On YouTube, okay. <laughs> you know what? It is important. Every media, it's important. Social media, regular media, the media, the radio stations that everybody tunes in at eight o'clock in the morning. You know, not everybody is on. It's on X or or you listening just, to the to just, the stream. I don't think that for the effort you're going to put in, the exposure you can get on social media, it's going to be a lot greater, and you're going to have a lot more impact. Especially when you're trying, we're well, trying to track money to come in. If, if we're getting attention of people who are already interested in crypto. Then you can get those people to come into our community and start asking questions. And that's where those people are at. The, the let, me you, let me tell you, let me tell you something. Social media, they're on Telegram. They're on these other channels like that. that that's where these communities are. Like, I get it. We that is fine. But we need more. We need more. Everything oh, counts. Everything counts. And we need general market media. There's no doubts about it. If not, Richard will not be saying, you know, reach out and go mm-hmm. out and it. Trust me, I worked in media. I know yeah, what I'm telling you. It, we need everything. Everything is welcome. We need social media. We need newspapers. We need magazines. We need, you know, the associate press that with one, co- the associate press, one comment could be international. That's what we need them. It's important. You know, we can reach out to five, six thousand, ten thousand people on X. Uh, but let me tell you something. Some of these morning shows, for example, that give the news have a, a cum of millions of people listening at once. So uh, they offer a lot higher. X, if you get it to blow up on X and tag Elon Musk a bunch of times, you might get his attention. And of course, absolutely. I'm, I'm tagging than, Elon every single time yeah, that I I'm talk saying, about that's, Richard. That's bigger than any traditional media can do nowadays. You get Elon Musk's attention? That's right. <laughs> but we need to be there. Get social media, Farmer. You're talking about social media. You don't even have one. Come on, help us. You know, I was going to mention- the front line. I was going to mention um, it only takes a spark to start a fire. And when that That's spark right. hits post chain in the community, it's going to go up a blaze. I mean, it's just going to blow up because people don't realize what's going on over here. Yeah, I think you like know, like you said, kept- like like George is saying that like for smaller people again, like yesterday when there was a dip, I threw 200, 200 bucks. I was able to bridge it over with sparks so relatively quick cost me like five bucks and and usdc i bridged over to die you know you you're able to you're able to dca in fact Mm -hmm. that's how i started dca into hex when it was just e-hex i would buy it through matic i could just buy 20 25 bucks at a time so if you did it through matic you can slowly build your bag and then when your bag was big enough you can bridge it over to the hex side so that's how I'm saying you, you have to have these options to get in smaller players in. That's right. Like I said, with, with Pulse Chain, you mm-hmm. can get smaller players in. The problem is we're smaller players and we don't have that much money to put in. Yeah, but you know what? You can fill a well, city with smaller players. Cool. You know, a wealth we can, can come in with a couple of millions, but you bring <laughs> more people. That's what we need. We need masses. We need to bring, you know, little shrimp. <laughs> to the, you can make I'm a big the shrimp eats. I'm, I'm what the shrimp eats. Hey, good, good stuff, good. guys. Hey, good, good stuff. I uh, I wanted to give Zenith and Will a chance to answer the question if they uh, had uh, had any sort of feedback for Plumber's question. Are you talking the specifically question. about the EHEX question? Yeah, is E-hex correct. Dead? Yep. Uh, I think you had a good take, which is that it's kind of dead right now. There are technically ways to uh, interact with it if you're a fan of the Max. Uh, Maximus project. Sorry, I got tongue tied there. All the ones with the different coins like base, trio, decky, lucky, the Maximus token. Those are ways to get around gas fees. But the bottom line here is that Hex on Pulse Chain is kind of the number one Hex now. Ehex is going to be playing second fiddle to that due to just the inherent advantage of actually using the use case of Hex. As far as the token itself goes, uh, when there's blood in the streets, it might be a good time to buy. That's all I'm going to say. So from the price performance standpoint, yeah. From the use case standpoint, you're better off just being on Pulse Chain. So until the gas fees get fixed or you 
particularly want to do the Maximus kind of style thing where you do lump sum pools to reduce gas fees, it's possible, but those gas fees will eat you up at some point. And then I got to say, Compassion had a really good point, though, which is that Ethereum is the larger chain, which means that just being on the larger chain has the availability of more people having ease of access to that hex. So there's potential there. I will say that in my take is not very complicated. I will say that Hex is doing the exact same thing that it's supposed to do, whether people are interested in buying it or not. So like if you measure dead via attention span, then sure it, it is, it is currently down for the count. It might get defibrillated. It might at some point it might, you know, just slowly slip off into the night, but the, the code is still functioning the way that the code is intended to function. It does suck that the price is down if you have an intention to get out in the near future. If you do not have an intention to get out in the near future and you want to do one of those Quattro Cinco stakes, then, you know, you'll be all right. Or, well, who knows? Maybe you won't be all right. Fuck if I know. Um, but, like, I'm not terribly worried about eHex being down right now because I've got, like, 15 or 14 or so years left before I got to worry about whatever the price is. So. We're on the same boat. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you, know you there. Hey, hey, Eco Builder, what's going on, man? Hey. Hey. Um, <clears throat> I was debating whether I'd come on here and join y'all or not because I didn't know if I had good enough news. <laughs> but then I thought that there is an $800 uh, grand prize for a postcard contest, design <gasps> contest. So um, examples is what we've done here in – the last few years, this was the last Pulse Chain one. And then here's the original Hex one. Sweet. Yeah, that's that's a version there. That's amazing. Yeah. That is one. amazing. Only seven I'm ready days to roll, left baby. for I'm a gonna design do my own. contest. I'm going to make one. I'm going to submit one. Hexpostcards.com forward slash contest. Beautiful. Do you Excellent. have any requirements for submissions, like file size, file type? I'm not sure what the uh, specifications are, but that page lists them. Perfect. And then that's also the place where we'll all go uh, to vote whenever all the submissions are in. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Can you Excellent. drop it in the chat and I can sort of highlight it on the yeah. screen? Yeah. Just drop it in the uh, drop it in the chat and I'll, I'll throw it up on the screen for you. I'll do that. And I want to selfishly leave because I'm staring at my supper. Thank you. Dude, yeah, thanks. Appreciate thanks for hopping, hopping in, Eco. That's awesome. Yeah, and man, for those of you guys who don't are who you do. Thanks for everything you do, Eco. You are so hard. You're an inspiration. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Peace. What a cool guy. He helped yeah. me out a lot with uh he helped me out a lot with my hex telegram chat when it first popped up. He uh he did a lot of design work for me. So big shout out to that to that gentleman. Super cool guy. Uh, for those of you who don't know who don't know who Eco is, he he does a lot of the design and a lot of the merch and a lot of the distribution for um, sending out hex postcards to the richest zip uh, zip codes in the United States. So, on the off chance that some rich person sees some hex merch in their mail, uh, it probably came from either Togosh or from uh, or from Eco Builder. So, big shout out to those guys, and he also runs his own Telegram channel where they um where they design all this stuff and that's that's probably in congruence with his uh his thing he's shouting out there so kick-ass stuff um good, you guys about ready to, to wrap this up and things i gotta go to sleep here soon it, it yeah, is yeah. getting pretty yeah. late We're, let's go ahead and uh wrap this thing up in about you know the next two or three minutes any final thoughts or anything from anybody before we log off we gotta ask the folks where everyone can find them. I was gonna say, George, oh. it's great to great to stream with you. Where can the people find you? Uh, I am on Twitter all the time. X at at Carrera Georgia. You can see it down here. Um, I stream with the ladies pretty much. Uh, with uh, anyone who invites me, I'll, I'll be streaming. So, uh, thank you so much for allowing me to be here with you guys. It's such a pleasure, and we all have to work together. Together. You know what? Richard is like family. We need to support him as much as he supports us. Um, and he right now doesn't have a voice. He's quiet. He has an army of people working for him and for us, for us, for our financial freedom, for our rights, for human rights. So we have to give everything that we have, that we can 
in order to support the cause. So keep supporting Richard. Boom. Mic drop. Absolutely Boom. love it. Compassion. Where can folks find you? Um, I threw it in the chat. You know, you can find me at John Boy Crypto. I do have a Crypto Compassion channel that I haven't fired up in a while. I have been asked to host the Texan tailgate kind of that represents Texan and that whole uh, ecosystem, if you will, uh, as far as, you know, sovereignty and freedom for all. That's kind of what that represents. Um, I'm not even a huge holder of Texan, to be honest, but I do believe in what Rags and Matt from Crypto Heartbeat have put forth. You know, um, we're all fighting for freedom. That's kind of what Richard's doing. That's what we're doing in October. It's for freedom and, and blockchain freedom. And um, shoot, we sacrifice for freedom of speech and freedom of movement, right? So, um, you know, we're all in the right place at the right time. Um, I'm excited about a lot of the uh, individuals that I've uh, linked up with throughout the years. Um, you know, I'm, you know, linked up with Randy and Access and Sloth and all these guys and and uh, I kind of know exactly where we're going as far as, you know, the shining city on the hill. So everyone needs to continue to have faith. You know, there's dips in the game and RH always talks about it, you know, and uh, our time is coming. So there it is. Farmer Jay, where can they find you? You guys can find me dumpster diving for more DCA money into the school <laughs> payment system. <laughs> the local group. <laughs> or in the DJ Roundtable Telegram chat. <laughs> good stuff. Apprehensive. Where can they find you? If somebody uh, somebody wants to get in touch with you because you made a good comment, where can they find you? Oh, you can find me on um, Twitter or X at um, Apprehensively7670. Um, soon I will be having my own channel, being a content provider. I'm just trying to put some, some stuff together and work on it. It's one man operation here. But um, focusing mainly on, you know, technical data and then, you know, just bringing a positive aspect to um, the community because man, we got a lot of negative out here. I want to bring some positives to the community <laughs> and stuff. That's my guy. Hey. That's one of my yeah. guy. It's Good the job. We shouldn't be depressed. We're on the pinnacle of, of blowing up. <laughs> That's man, right. We need to be encouraging one another, not discouraging and fighting in fight. Two more weeks. Two more weeks and we pump. Two more weeks. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Will, <laughs> where can uh where can the folks find you? You guys can find me in the DGen Roundtable community chat at bit.ly forward slash degenerate underscore roundtable. Or if you want to look at my socials or stalk me on the internet or whatever, then you can find all of my socials and all of the work that I've done on linktree forward slash Will Stevenson. Z, what you got? Well, the good folks at home can find me on Twitter and Instagram at ZenithDI. And then I did also want to give a special shout out to the gang that is not here tonight, which is the usual suspects, a.k.a. the captain, Wild SJ. They are out in Utah this weekend. I believe they will be streaming or there's a uh, there might be a paid version to get access to the stream going on. They got awesome panels going on. They got Fashion Coder, Donovan Jolly, Nerd United, Hex Ray Vision, uh, Drak and Brad. I believe they are the, the Tang Talk guys and... The panels look fantastic. If you get a chance to support them, please support the people that are doing the good work. And I think they're doing fantastic work. That's what I got. Yeah. Shout out to RG. Shout out to Wild SJ, Black Hex. Can they turn over the keys to us tonight? It's not easy to do that. Um, no. So hopefully, uh, <laughs> hope, well, yeah, I'm sorry. What were we going to say, Georgia? Where can we find you? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, definitely. If you guys aren't subscribed, check out DGen Roundtable. Um, we have a show every Sunday night, eight o'clock PM. We also I have a, watch it. I haven't watched yeah, it. We also have oh a Wednesday goodness. night show. So we have a Wednesday night show as well. Uh, we have a special guest on every other Wednesday. And then the Wednesdays that we don't have a special guest is a whiskey Wednesday. It's our version of F and hangout pretty much. Wow. We usually like to bring on a featured uh, community member for 30 minutes to an hour introduce them to the channel to the community and stuff and then we have an open conversation where people can hop on similar to this so if you guys haven't checked it out yet dj roundtable check us out on youtube uh you guys will find us there we just crossed the 1000 sub mark so we're super excited about that um my name is josh you guys can find me on twitter on instagram at chocolate taints that's my moniker on there you guys can uh find me there I'm also in the Telegram channel, so make sure you guys are in the DJ Roundtable Telegram. Uh, but again, I can't say it enough. Shout out RG3, Wild SJ, 
uh, all those in the Discord syndicate. It's not easy to turn over the keys to something that you built uh, while they're away. So shout out to them. Hopefully they have a, a great Pulse Chain Tour uh, conference tomorrow. That's going to be awesome. Um, so, uh, but, uh, yeah, we loved filling in excited about the opportunity chat. You guys were absolutely on fire tonight. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love the conversation. Absolutely love the energy, the back and forth, the sidebar conversations. Everything was absolutely phenomenal. So, uh, you guys made the show what it is. We're just a couple folks on screen that like to talk a little bit, but, uh, it really is a community feel. So we thank you guys so much for that. We hope everybody here has an absolutely great night. Um, have a great weekend. Uh, you know, hang out with folks that you care about, hang out with folks that you love. Make sure you guys reach out to friends, reach out to family, check on them, let them know how they're doing. And uh, everybody have themselves a great weekend. And with that being said, you guys have a great night. Thank mm -hmm. you.